The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Welcome back to theCUBE. This is SiliconANGLE TV's live wall-to-wall -wall coverage of EMC World 2014 here in the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas. We've got three days, two stages, over 80 guests, lots of practitioners, executives, business leaders. We've got a special segment I'm bringing you today, bringing on two-thirds of the Geek Whispers podcast. Uh, those in, in, in the storage, the virtualization and cloud communities know our two guests well. Uh, let me introduce, it's John Troyer who's making his debut as the founder of Tech Reckoning. Thanks for having me, sir. And uh, we, we've got Amy Lewis, Influence Marketing uh, from Cisco. Amy, it's your first time on theCUBE, so you know, welcome to the program. Thank you, Stu, for having me on. All right, so, so guys, you know, we, we've been to a lot of conferences. We, we've hung out with you know, the various influencers, the bloggers, um, you know, it's, it's changed a lot. This is my 12th year coming to EMC World. Uh, if you had told me 12 years ago uh, some of the things I'd be doing at this show, I, I wouldn't have believed you. I mean, I was one of the guys in Apollo that only got out of the, out of the office once a year to be able to give a presentation and you know, talk to some people about some cool tech. Um, and you know, social media is one of those things that you know, turned my career to 11. So, um, you know, let's have a conversation about what's going on in the industry with kind of the community influencers and everything. John, maybe you can start us off since, uh, you know, maybe it, it leads into your, your new gig, so. Sure, sure. On, on, what, on one hand, things have changed. On the other hand, the same dynamics are playing out. Uh, the, buying, the buying cycle has changed. The buying process has changed. Customers are looking much more to their peers and not to traditional media and analysts, marketing folks, you know, they, they can't buy more ads, you can't send out more emails, so what do you do? You need to get part of the conversation. We've been saying that for, for five or 10 years, but it's actually happened now. Uh, the folks that were early on into the blogging space and kind of turned themselves into communicators as well as technologists, we've seen, you know, their careers have, have gone in all sorts of interesting places, for instance, you. But I, I think now that even, what we can talk about is, is blogging dead, but I think now we're seeing it, we're seeing social media not as a trade or a, pra a practice, but simply a tool set that we all use. So that's, I'm seeing it, it's, a, it's more of a, uh, it's, it's spread throughout our, our organization, not, not so much uh, in one tiny niche right now. Yeah, John, I, I love that point. I, I, I've been preaching for a bunch of years that this is an important skill set that you have to have. They're wonderful tools, but you know, you've been doing community for a lot longer than social media uh, yes. has been around. And you know, so it, it, it's piece, you know, Amy, you're influence marketing. What, what, please weigh in on this. Yeah, no, and I, I chose the title actually myself on purpose to say it's not just social media. I think social media is very important, but like John was saying, that to me is a set of tools. They're important platforms, they're important communications channels, but um, influencers, the people who, I've coined the term citizen analysts. They are unpaid analysts, but people are very passionate about technology and they want to write and blog and share, really uh, engage their community. That's an important group of people. It's a, really a buying center and we have to find new ways to address them. So community is more important than ever. Wow, well, citizen analyst, uh, yeah, let's let poke at that for a second. Because <laughs> some of the people, uh, you know, I, I, I'd say some people go to an event and they get, you know, get wined and dined and they get to, you know, write about a bunch of stuff. I'm like, you know, you're better than journalists, you know. You're you know, you, you do some really good stuff and sometimes it, it's a little bit too friendly to uh, the people that, that are doing it. So, you know, wh wh where do you see the role of kind of the press, uh, you know, the analyst and, and the influencer? It's a great question. Um, I've been joking, we need to abstract the org chart. It is, a, it is a complicated question, but I think the traditional press is really trained, and rightfully so, in giving us that neutrality. So that is still a very important role. I think the analysts are, are paid um, to, to analyze particular sets, et cetera. They have niche and specialty. I think the citizen analyst is interesting because they are, um, you don't know about the neutrality, but you do know that they are people who uh, roll up their sleeves and really touch the technology. So that becomes a very interesting set because they really care about the technology because that could become their problem if they don't, uh, you know, raise their voice and, and sort of engage with the technology and let the community know what what the new trends are, what they need, what the business needs are, et cetera. It gives us a really applied version of both the PR and the AR side. Don, do you want to comment on that? Or? No, I just, I mean, these are the folks that they're, they lose their jobs if they pick the wrong technology. So they have much more, their, their discussions have, a, uh, they have some more skin in the game. Why don't we say that? 
Yeah, I, I, that, that's right. If you've got the practitioner, you know, whether it be the end user, or sometimes it's the you know channel guy uh, that, that do that. That, that that's good. Um, you know, what, what about the people like inside the corporations that are you know also using these tools? I'm super bullish about the use of employees as advocates and evangelists in our community, both for technical education and, and, and for the commercial part of our conversation. In the enterprise space, we don't sell solutions with a brochure. Here, here's a brochure, very <laughs> nice to call, you know, give me a call. We sell it with relationships and with people. I've been working on with social media since it existed, I suppose. And what we've seen over and over again is uh, the, the social channels are really great for getting the word out, but without that personal component, it's like just handing out brochures. So you need your employees out there, you need your employees talking to folks, you need your employees out there representing your brand, just like they would at an event. And, and I've seen that, it, it, at some hand, it, on one hand, it's something that's so trivial that we all agree it's true, but on the other hand, I, don't th I think a lot of people are just realizing that now. Yeah, so, so, so John, you know, there's some some of the big companies, you know, create certification programs to do some of this. Uh, there's some companies that just, you know, sign everybody up, and you know, it can be kind of an echo chamber or uh, things like that. You know, what, what what are you seeing these days to kind of help out, you know, the, the community? Well, there's a lot of software and a lot of uh, programmatic things you can do. Uh, those may be useful in terms of organizing you. It comes down to the people and the culture of the company and how much you trust your people to, to go out. I think the best thing we can do is set up a platform for folks to be able to uh, to communicate. I think that's actually what Amy does really well at Cisco. Right. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> it's um, I, I always talk about influence marketing as being people, platforms, and content. And so I agree. I think that we sorted out some of the platform issues um, as we learned about social media and grew up with it. I think that we are still working out the people and the content side and uh, what's appropriate, how we can join together and do that, and how we can create some new platforms, maybe using the tools of social to, to drive the conversation forward. All right, so, so Amy, I got one for you. You know, How, how do we balance the kind of uh, creation of information and kind of the community and fun? I mean, you, you, you do a lot of fun events. You've got, you know, Waffle Club this week, you've got, you know, uh, Bacon Stack and Beat Bacon and Bacon IT. I mean, <laughs> I, I can't keep track. I mean, you know, Unicorns, Bacons and everything. And, you know, th there'd be some executives here that would be like, oh, that's that social stuff and they're <laughs> playing games and things like that. So uh, how do we balance kind of adding business value and creating, you know, value to the community and, you know, having fun and building community? No, it's a great question. Uh, a couple years ago, I got a text in the middle of the night that said, please explain to me how uh, v Bacon is uh, a marketing play. <laughs> Please explain this. And uh, you know, I need a PowerPoint slide. So if you've never had to explain V Bacon on a PowerPoint slide, I, I throw that challenge out to everyone. Um, but I think in the last couple of years, people have started to see it more and more as we are a, we're similar to the sales role, and that's how we've sort of changed the language. So. I, I perform a sales-like function, except I don't carry a quota. So it is about building the relationship, like John was saying. And it is about balancing fun with your intent. So I think that if you create a fun environment, if you create an openness and a willingness to listen, then the good things will follow. So you form the relationships with people, you open up their ability to create content with you because they don't feel under attack, they're ready to share. And again, it's, it's kind of a magical formula of be nice and create opportunity. Yeah. So. Go ahead. I think well, part of it's a generational shift. I think part of it's a generational shift, and part of it is a temperamental shift. Mm -hmm. So, traditionally, again, going back to sales, traditional enterprise sales, you might go out and play golf with somebody because that's what you enjoy doing. For our kind of geeks, our golf is eating bacon and talking <laughs> about deduplication strategies. Right? <laughs> that's where we're having the most fun. Yeah. So, it's it's just a, it's the same sort of thing, just a shift in generation, maybe. Yeah, um, I wonder, you know, what, what role does the community help in kind of careers? Uh, you know, I, I think, you know, we're talking so much of these shows about, you know, if you're a storage admin or if you're a networking admin and, you know, you're down there, you know, configuring LUNs or setting up VLANs, you know, you're going to be out of a job in a couple of years because automation's going to change. Um, you know, how much does the community help in kind of those career paths in education? 
So, John, I think we should interview Stu on this one. Should we uh, have the Geek Whisperers take over? <laughs> so, I, I think this is, you're a great example. You've talked about, you know, you were on a career path, and we hear this a lot. And when you raise your hand to volunteer, we sort of jokingly call these folks unicorns who both really enjoy the technology and like to communicate about it. When you raise your hand and make yourself known to the community, to your employers, to the world at large, it gives you different opportunities. And I think, um, I don't think you go into technology, really, uh, without wanting to have an evolving, exciting career. So I think that these becoming proficient in these tools, joining your community is an opportunity to learn from your peers, to get back to your peers, and to raise your profile and, and open yourself up to the possibility of a new opportunity or a new idea or a different um, engagement, a new way to learn. Yeah. In today's business environment, communication is a key part of whatever you do, even if you're the guy sitting there configuring the lunch. Because if you're not communicating with your teams and the application teams and the storage and network and virtualization team, uh, you, you're not going to succeed. So I think that's an important part of it, right? Being a communicator, absolutely critical in our, in, in our environment today. All right, so e either one of you feel free to answer, but you know, I, I think back to my early days. You know, in 2008, I was so excited when I got invited to a couple of conferences. As a blogger, you can kind of get a pass, and I would, you know, tend to take my own vacation time and usually spend my own expenses because my employer at the time didn't get it. It was this innovation conference in like, you know, New York City with, you know, 400 people, and it was like kind of amazing. And I've seen people go to VMworld uh, on their own dime where they can get a pass. I mean, you know, it's great to see when, you, when you've got the passion. Um, so I, I guess the, but the question I wanted to ask is, you know, with companies today, who should they be inviting? How do they do it? You know, uh, you, you know, is it, you know, the blogger or is it the, you know, EMC Lex, Cisco expert, you know, VMware V expert? You know, what's how, how's that? How's that changing, or is it changing? Well, I think what you've seen happen over the years is something that was a little more unstructured, which was a kind of blogger relations program working with both customers, partners, employees in your ecosystem has turned into something a little more formal. Uh, we created the vExpert program in 2009 to kind of formalize what we were already doing. It's an analogy to the analyst relations, press relations, investor relations sorts of programs. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a little more buttoned up, it's a little more of a membership thing, but we, I know both at EMC and, and VMware and, and at Cisco with Cisco Champions too, they try to embrace all the folks that are out there blogging. I think uh, you know if you're a marketer, you need to make sure that you're, you keep your eyes open and you don't just talk to the people that you've gathered in your living room. But uh, you know, it, a lot of it's pretty easy if you're enthusiastic about a technology, if you're engaged with the technology, if you put some effort into it. It's actually pretty easy to get involved with one of these programs. They're they're the, and they're there for the people in them, right? They're, they're not there to say the glory of EMC and the glory of Cisco and, and, and the glory of VMware. They're there to help you with your career. They're there to give you tools, to give you networking, and to you know, hopefully get you to places like this. So uh, I encourage everybody that, that's interested in starting, you know, it, it, go ahead and get started. It's easier than you think to get involved. I totally agree with that, and I think that um, we want to be almost like an airline program that you'd actually want to participate in, is sort of my joke. Like, this is a customer service activity, and I often talk about, if you talk about the large pool of influencers, maybe they haven't identified yet, or maybe they prefer to stay independent, or maybe they, they do have um, interest in a lot of different technologies, so it wouldn't be um, for them to engage in one of these programs, then that's still an important set of people that you have to deal with as a marketing class, and, you know, and, and again, set up these blogger days, have blogger briefings. But like John was saying, when you have the group of people that you name and give it a program name, and this is a little bit of inside baseball like we like to talk about, give a program a name and funding can follow. So if you're working in a corporate marketing environment, it's really important to explain to people the marketing structure behind what you're doing. And when you treat them as a class, um, it gives you some advantages. You can scale out a little easier, you can provide more assets to those individuals, and it frees you up to do um, what I love to do, which is, is to really engage with those individuals and create content with them. So. Yeah. Uh, so, how is engagement these days? You know, I, I think back. You know, the t you know, ten years ago, you talk. You know, one percent of the community would you know be doing almost all the contribution. Ten percent might be a little active, and everybody else is a lurker. You know, when we founded Wikibon, uh, Dave Vellante actually has on his business card that he's a one percenter, which goes back to you know, it, it's, it's you know the one percent that causes all the trouble. <laughs> it's the one percent that causes all uh, all of the uh, commotion. So you know, th th this wave. I mean, we were founded off of you know Wikonomics and, and crowdsourcing and everything else. And, and the cube is all about you know, sharing information. We put it all out there, we want everybody to contribute and, and you know, give that feedback. You know, you know, how are we along that, you know, the, the, that journey? 
to get more people involved? I, I actually think the opportunity is there more than ever. I think you're right. I mean, there's always going to be a percentage of people who want to raise their hand in the class, that want to give up their PTO to go to a conference, that, that have this other life. They just can't help themselves. And so in some ways, it's finding the most impassioned and giving them the opportunities. But I think that with the platforms and the scale, there is a greater opportunity for people. If they don't want to start their own blog, for instance, one of the things we do at Cisco Champions is allow people to guest blog or allow them to co-host a podcast. So I think there are more and more ways to, um, and there, you know, that's one example. There's lots of other groups that provide people, again, a little bit, a dose of it. So they might not want to run a full media company on their own. They don't want to, you know, build the queue, but they, they want to participate. And I think that we have so many more opportunities for them to do that, that we're seeing growth. We are seeing platform shifts yeah. over the years. I think we, as technologists and human beings, have a tendency to forget our past relatively quickly. And uh, as people have moved from the MySpace world to the Facebook, Twitter <laughs> world, I think actually we're headed for, mm, it, I don't call it, I don't want to call it post-Facebook, mm. but it certainly is a multi-platform world maybe, yes. just like it's a multi-device world, we're not a post-PC world. In that, I, I think you're seeing uh, the rise of more specialized communities. They come back again they, from, from, our, from our origins back 10 or 20 years ago. I think we're seeing that people want more deeper engagement. A lot of the, comp a lot of the rapport building and kind of conversation and hey, how are you, goes on on Twitter. But I think people are really looking for a place where they can have a better conversation, more interaction, more lasting depth. That might not be on their own blog, in their own kind of indie web sort of style roll your own blog, but, but there are more and more platforms that people are making available for this kind of connection. Again, what was once niche, eventually permeates the whole fabric. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so, so uh, you know, the, the, the concern I have is it, it, it's tough because it, it is so dispersed right now. Mm -hmm. And you know, yeah, you know, I love Twitter, you know, hi, I'm Stu, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, on Twitter, and I know you guys are, are big on it too, and I John, love the multi-platform discussion. Yeah. Um, you know, the, Always yeah. love when you drop that kind of information on the community, um, but you know how do we how do we get that depth? It's, it's one of the things I, I always worry about. Is you know it, it, people will read the headline and you know just react at it, and you know they, they might even share it a bunch, but they haven't read it. Uh, so you know how how do we get that deeper engagement, deeper understanding? I mean, it, you know I, I always say you know the, the I'm too busy is is a poor excuse because you know uh, you know Michelangelo and Einstein had as many hours in the day as, as we did, and you know sure they didn't have their phone buzzing all over the place, <laughs> but, you know. I actually think we should do less, not more. I think, I think too much information, too many channels, too many corporate channels, too many personal channels, too much bad content. The world does not need more crappy content. So whether you're a individual blogger or a marketer, I'd say just turn the dial back a little bit. It's, you know, it, work on better, longer pieces that add more value. I think that's the only way that we can shift the conversation. Yeah, long form, love it. Uh, right. You know, a a absolutely. Um, you know, I, I still read. So <laughs> it's well, and it's a curatorial function yeah. as well that we have to be responsible, and that's yet one more way people can participate. We see people rise in. Um, uh, in the community because they're really great curators, because they syndicate the content in ways that are interesting to others, because time is of a value. So that becomes a real asset and a skill as well. Yeah, no, great, great point, because you know, so many times I'm like, oh, I, I'd really like to do a thousand word post mm -hmm. on this, but you know, sometimes I'll, I'll come out of this show and take, you know, I did a year ago, I did, a, I did an article on the EMC Federation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, EMC, VMware, and Pivotal, and coming out of the show, I've got a lot of new data, and I can really quickly take some of the photos I've done, take some of the you know, notes I've taken, some of the tweets, and you know, put together an article. It won't take me as long. I mean, I'll probably do it on the plane road ride home. Um, so, I, I, what I want to ask next is, you know, you guys see a lot of things out there. You know, what, what's the coolest thing you're seeing, either at a at a conference or event, or you know, what, what what's catching your eye? What what's interesting? Hmm. John. <laughs> I, there's a cool new site out there called Tech Records. <laughs> I don't know, what's cool out there? I, again, I'm seeing multi-channel, multi, a, a lot of experiments. There's some cool stuff going on with the indie web. There's, uh, I mean, everything's mobile. I don't know, it, yeah. it, it, there's, just, right, there's a lot of places it, it, it there. It sounds like you, let, let's give the plug on Tech Records. How's Tech Records <laughs> going to help us you know, find the cool things and, and you know, solve, solve some of these well, challenges like, uh, from the multi-platform? Tech Reckoning is a, is a, is a site that's going to bring, uh, it's, a, it's an independent site, it's not associated with any vendor, it's going to bring some of the IT community and enterprise community together to talk about some of these things, about where's IT going as a whole, 
where's technology going, where are our careers going, to try to help us get to whatever this, you know, IT as a service, third platform, whatever you want to call it, wherever the heck we're going, it looks pretty interesting, and it looks like IT isn't going to be quite the same thing. So we're trying to bring together a set of people and just tackle some of those problems, and also work together and collaborate. It's so much easier with open source, with cloud, uh, with all the tools we have available. It's so cheap and easy to build new pieces of technology, not just to type at each other words online, but to actually build stuff that I'm very excited about the power of taking, you know, borrowing this from open source, right? Taking the power of people to come together and build cool new stuff. That's what I would like to do. And Stu, I'm just angry that you scooped Matt and I on getting to interview John first about tech <laughs> reckoning. <laughs> That's right. So Amy, you, you, you do some cool things at some of the events. We talked about the waffle and bacon. You know, what, what have you seen out there that, that's kind of interesting, or you know, how, how do you find some of the cool new ideas? Yeah, I think you always, um, I'm working with a really talented events team right now, and, and I think one of the things I've seen them um, sort of transform is that social is not other, you know? And, and we're seeing social and this concept of community permeate and really think about our audience to really engage that, that core base, those, those tech enthusiasts, and to see what you can do to in, engage them. So I'm seeing it in real life and in these community platforms. So I think that's been one of the other great trends is watching people band together and various kinds of consortiums. I won't name names, but there's a few folks out in the community we're seeing a lot of this happen where they're sort of grouping together and they're seeing if they pull their resources what happens. Um, they might be able to gather enough money to go to a conference or to fund a buddy or to get a hotel room that they've got extra space so somebody can crash. So I'm seeing it's very cool sort of stitching together opportunity and, and working together to learn more. So again, that combination of the platforms using the technology and then uh, in real life connection. All right, so, so I've been asking all the questions here. So before we wrap up, <laughs> you know, Amy, anything you want to watch? John, you want to ask me? John, same? Let me throw it open. <laughs> When, whenever you first signed up for your Twitter account, did yeah. you think it would lead you here? Because no. you have the best Twitter no, account No, no, actually, a, a, a friend of mine from EMC, Steve Todd, um, who was blogging before I was, and he said, you know, when you, you, there's that trepidation when you're going to hit publish, mm -hmm. and you never know where it lead. Uh, and we were talking about this after he and I were uh, on the stage at Radio City Music Hall right after Bill Clinton had been on wow. uh, because they, they brought the bloggers down when we were there and it's like come on you know I, I'm you know I'm, I'm an engineer by training you know I, I've done you know I've done some sales I've done engineering I, I've done you know operations and technologist at heart so uh, you know some of the places I've got the people I've met I mean if you just reach out to people um, it, it's still even though there's so many people on Twitter you know the people that write and are authors and bloggers, if you comment or you reach out to them, a lot of them will reach back. I mean, and you know, I, I'm still amazed at some of the people I've met and get to rub elbows with and, you know, just, just have had a blast with it, so. Nice. I've got another one. Yeah. So do you think unicorns can be uh, trained? Do you think people have to be born with a skill set, or do you think you can be a unicorn rancher? No, I, I, I think I, I think I think they can be trained. You know, it's uh, absolutely it's uh, it's a tough skill set. I mean, you know, doing video is not easy. It's the first couple times you do it, it's different. <laughs> there's there's all these muscles. You know, writing was one of those things that, you know. I thought I was an okay writer, but hadn't done a lot of it. There, there are things you do, so try it out. And the, the thing I'd say is, you got to stick with it for a while. I, I thought Twitter was pretty stupid when I first <laughs> got on it, but you know, I stuck on it for another six months and had some fun with it. And you know, here, here we are, six years later, and uh, you know, it's done a lot. And you know, blog, you know, the writing and blogging and everything else, uh, you know, all over. So, I like the muscle memory idea. The it's hard. I were on camera. I have to remember not to scratch my face and stand up straight and all that sort of stuff. It is a skill set. I actually, I actually am seeing a lot of interest in short form video. Uh, I know the kids are all doing it. I mean, obviously we're doing it here. You do it as part of your practice. But in talking with people about our, our new activities, it's just so easy to, to take and share. I think uh, I think that's actually, even though it's been coming up for years, I think we're I think that's an interesting thing. Like yeah. Doing uh, and all right, I'll, I'll give one of those inside tips. Right, video is great. Some people don't like to watch video. Yeah, podcasts are great. Some people don't like to listen to them. You know, writing's yeah. great. Some people won't read. So you know, w one of the early lessons I had is when I was, you know, being a you know active member on standards and evangelizing a solution. 
I did it everywhere. It's, you know, yeah, you get right. presentations at shows, you put it up on SlideShare, you do YouTube videos, you blog about it, you talk to everybody you that, that you can everywhere, and, you know, it just permeates out there. So mm -hmm. it, it, it can be a bunch of works, and, and there's mm -hmm. tools that are out there yeah. to help. And you connect it to offline events, yes. right? Mm -hmm. I, I've discovered recently, and I, I can't believe I just realized this, but it was with a conversation with Amy on our, our Geek Whispers podcast that even though I've been part of an online group for, for years, I, I'm part of digital marketing for, for VMware, uh, uh, for years. Uh, actually, most of my work, half of my work is offline. Mm -hmm. Half of my work is meeting people in person, getting to meet them, and connecting that online and offline. And the synergy there is just is, is, is immense. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, other than the keynotes, my phone stays in my pocket for the most time unless I'm going between events. It's, it's the in real life and really getting to know things. I always joke, I said, you know, if Twitter went away tomorrow, I'd be a little sad, but I can connect to most of all those people. I got them on LinkedIn and Facebook and, and, and you know, you know, email, I still use some, so, you know. Uh, <laughs> Death to right. email. Old school, <laughs> a absolutely. So, uh, you, know, you know, to wrap, I, I guess if, if you want to just, you know, where, where do people find more, find your podcast, find your website? Uh, you know, Amy, I'll, I'll, I'll let you start. Well, our, um, our Geek Whispers is, of course, geek-whispers.com, and we uh, publish every week, so... Uh, Give us a listen, see what you think. And uh, uh, Matthew Brender, sorry you couldn't join this time, yeah. but uh, you know, it, it, how odd is it? We're at EMC World, and you two are here, and Matthew's not. So it, it's uh, hard. We're know, gonna but, but, uh, we're gonna shout out to him. So. It's true. We're gonna record with him, like as a Max Headroom figure on a yes tomorrow. So, um, and also I'm on Twitter as uh, Comms Ninja, and uh, I blog under that same ComsNinja.com. So. And you also have Engineers Unplugged. That's true. I have EngineersUnplugged.com as well, and now 60 Second Tech, the uh, the short version, the popcorn version. <laughs> and I'm uh, I'm at Jay Troyer on Twitter and TechReckoning.com. It's my new site. All right. Well, hey, Amy and John, thanks so much. We we love uh, taking the podcast Inception style inside the cube. Uh, look forward to seeing you at lots of events, connecting with the community and everybody. Definitely check out their stuff. Uh, I'm at Stu on Twitter. Wikibon.org is where most of my articles go. And, uh, of course, SiliconAngle.tv is where you can find all the video. Thanks for joining us. We will be back with the rest of the EMC World coverage.